Hello, just looking over some quick reliability and accuracy upgrades for your mini lathe that are relatively easy and will increase its lifespan by a fair bit. To begin with, we're going to look at the um, saddle um, retainers. Um, from the factory, they, they will be at an angle. This is extremely exaggerated, but you can see that they sit, don't sit very well. And um, what I've done is I've added brass shims onto these and I just get the perfect stack so that once I tighten those Allen heads on the bottom it goes to the perfect tightness and I've done that for both sides and the way I've cut these is I bought some shim stock that's a quarter inch wide at my hobby shop I made this out of aluminum um, it's a bit ratty just because it was in my vice but you drill the holes you clamp it and then you can just easily drill through the brass without mangling the out edges too much. And so that's for the saddle rails. Um, to increase the accuracy of the tail stock, I did a couple adjustments. So you can slide shims underneath here to raise and lower it to get the perfect height. Um, I drilled and tapped these two bolts, um, as well as the one up here, to change the angle, so this way. And you can also adjust the thickness of the shims front to back to change this angle. And then I added this one here, which threads through and has a nut in the bottom, um, which I can quickly show. It has a nut right there. Just a little on there. Okay, so that locks everything down. Instead of using the bolt from the bottom, that sucks. This can lock it down from the top to make adjustments easier. And to check your results, once you tighten everything down, the height and the X and the Y, um, so the distance this way and up and down are checked just using conventional methods, but to check the angle, the yaw and this one, what you can do is you can set up a um, dial indicator on your slide and you'll run it across the entire side and you wanna make sure that needle holds steady in all directions. Another upgrade I've done is to install brass gib strips, just here and here. Um, I find that these make the actions a lot smoother. Um, and so, when you buy them, they come blank. They, they look like this, but brass, but they don't have those holes. And um, so I'm gonna just quickly explain how I made those holes. So first you will line up, you'll just slide the gib in there where, where you want it. And you'll take these adjusting screws out and you can buy these cone point set screws just on Amazon. And you'll thread them in. <laughs> And it'll go in like this and it'll make a center point exactly where it should be. So for all the Malong. And then once you have that center point, you can bring it over to the drill press. And I rigged it up with some brass plates just so I don't mangle the brass gib screw. This is just the old one. The brass ones are obviously in the machine still as I showed you. But um, then you can rig up the perfect height using a precision strip. So the trick with these is when you drill, you're not drilling normal to the surface. You're drilling angled. So that doesn't really work because if you were to plunge a drill bit in, it would just walk and that's no good. So with this, I will center it up in the, um, in the press and I'll center up the holes with a, with a drill. I'll just find the center. Then I'll lock the table down with the lock nuts. So my uh, mill has slipped away from me here. Um, then I'll set it up the mill and I'll just come down just until it makes a flat crust, flat area. Then I'll go back to a drill and drill the perfect, um, just a, just a cone, just for the, a dog screw to sit in once it's in the lathe. And then I'll do that for all three and it works out pretty good.
Another quick thing I found that works fairly well for me and results in a pretty good service finish is I find I can, if I have a smaller bit, um, such as this Aki size one here, um, what I can do is I, I used, I bought extra feeler gauges and I can stack the feeler gauges to get the perfect height um, to the center. And I found that that works really well. Another trick slash tool I can use is to cut um, key slots or things in bar stock using this lathe. So what I've done is I've welded up something um, where this angle here and this angle here have to be identical. It doesn't really matter what they are, they just have to be identical. And you don't have to stress too much about being perfect in terms of your height or anything like that. Um, even if it's slightly off, it's okay. It, you can work it out. So you can adjust the height using these shims underneath, similar to what I've done with the tool. And so then using U-bolts, you can clamp your workpiece into this and it'll be perfect. And your end mill, which would be in your chuck, would be here. And when you do the cross slide, it'll essentially just cut the end mill through perfectly like that. And the way you can get this, the height set up perfect is once your workpiece is perfectly clamped in here, you can run it up against the end mill. So I'm just, since I'm recording with one hand, it's a bit difficult to show here, but it'll look like this. And then you can take a measurement between the two sides. Um, you can measure from the end mill center of the, um, let me grab a caliper to explain. Um, see if I can set my phone up somewhere. So, your end mill will look like this, and you can just take a measurement from this side and on this side, and you can shim it till that's perfect, and once that's perfect, you know you're centered. And then you can just quickly do a lot of end mill passes and move the slide in and out, and just slowly go deeper with it. Yeah, so then that works out pretty well.